Welcome to today's session on data extraction. Today I'm going to show how to join a VBAC and VBAP table. Here I have a set of fields for the VBAC table and here a set of fields for the VBAP table. Now in Process Runner I've already created two data extraction files, one for the VBAC table and one for the VBAP table. I'm going to open up this file here for the VBAC table. This is going to be my parent file. I'll just show you what I've done as far as the mapping goes. Uh, first of all, before I show you that though, from the home tab, I've set my SAP messaging to write to column N. And this is because uh, with the spreadsheet here, my last set of data for the VBAP table writes to column L. And so I wanted column N to start my SAP messaging. And so that's the reason for that. Uh, you'll also notice that my start row is 5, and I can make the end row as high as a number as I want, as Excel has a million row limit. I've set a maximum record for extraction to 50. This as well could be much higher, as high as a million if you want, but uh, I just wanted to limit it for the point of the demo. So again, that uh, start row is going to be row 5. This is where I want my data to start writing to. And just keep in mind here that my customer number is going to come from cell A2 and my sales document from cell B2. So these are going to be my filters for the data extraction. And so I'm going to go to the mapper tab here and I'm going to go to this simple view active rows and this will show you the mapping that I've done. So I've got my sales document uh, coming from column A, my document date coming from column E, my net value or total price coming from column F, sales organization from B, distribution channel from C, uh, division from D, and then my document date uh, is from E. I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but document date is from E. And so taking a look at my data filter builders here, I've created two filters, one for the sold to party or customer number that is coming from the cell A2, and then my sales document number that is coming from cell B2, and then I have a couple formulas in here. So I have a logical operator of AND, and so I can filter on both of these. Or in the case where I don't want to filter on the sales document number, I've added this dynamic skip capability, the suppress field on blank, right from this drop down here. And then also the sales document number does require that I add leading zeros. So from the dynamic formula drop down, I've selected the add leading zeros. And Process Runner will automatically determine how many characters that I need to add, so I don't need to worry about, about setting that value. Process Runner determines that for me automatically. So that is my data filter builders and my mapping. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this, and I've set it to run to this uh, external Excel file that I showed you earlier. So I'm going to press the run button here just going to show you what that first data extraction looks like from the VBAC table and then I'll show you how we link the two tables the VBAC and the VBAP together. So there is my data extraction and uh, coming uh, right to there and I actually forgot to set a customer number in there so let me just go back here and let's set in a customer number of a thousand so let me delete the data here Put in my customer number and we'll just run this one more time. All right, so there is my uh, date extraction based on a thousand. And if I wanted to filter by the sales document number, it's just uh, telling me here that it's finished so let me go back over here so if I want to filter this by a particular uh, sales document number and so I'm gonna select uh, the 6559 here so let me just delete this here and now I'm gonna set this at 6559 again run this and you'll see why uh, why I've picked this particular number when I link it to the VBAP table So there is a filtering based on a customer number as well as a sales document number. 
just kind of goes back and forth between the Excel spreadsheet and process runner. So now I know my VBAC table is working properly. So in order to join the tables together, you notice that I am going to be linking them based on the sales document number. And because I'm going to be doing that, linking them on the sales document number, I'm going to have that sales document number right to column G. So it's going to filter off of the sales document number in column A. It'll rewrite that number in G, and that will allow me to match the sales document number with my particular sales document line items. So I'm going to delete this data here and delete the sales document number. We'll do a filter based on the customer number 1000. So I'm going to go back into Process Runner here, uh, save this, and uh, go to my Start page. And here I have the VBAP file. So I'm just going to open this up and show you this particular file. So I'm going to go to the Mapper tab first. And I've got this linked to that same VA01 file here. And so I'm just going to scroll over. and go to this uh, simple view active rows there you can see I've got the sales document number is going to write again to column G sales document item is from H my material number from I base unit of measure from J order quantity from K my net, pr net price uh, from column L now the key to setting this up now for the link is to go to the data filter builder and from here select the field that you want them to be linked by. So in this case, it's going to be the sales document number. And this is going to be a single value. I could uh, select some of these other items here. But since I am doing a join based on this, I'm just going to go with the single value here. And I'm going to select uh, the Excel to SAP. And this is going to come from column A. So the VBAC data extraction is going to write the sales document number to A. My VBAP is going to filter off of the sales document numbers in column A and then write the values uh, starting from G here. So I'm going to save this now and go back to the Start Page tab and open up the VBAC extraction file. Now from here I'm going to select the Advanced tab and I'm going to select this Enable Connection. And then from here, the folder, I select the particular process file that I want to link. In this case, it's going to be the VBAP. Just going to uh, scroll through all of my scripts that I've created. There's my VBAP script. And push the open button here. And now I've linked the VBAP table to the VBAP table because I have the data filter builder in the VBAP table drawing from column A. These are now going to be linked data extractions. All right, so that's set for me now. I'm going to click the Save button, and I'm now going to run this. I'm just going to make sure that my data is clear here. Got that filter again at the customer number 1,000. Go ahead and press the Run button here. Now we should see the data extraction from two linked extraction files. So the first thing that we're going to see is the execution of the VBAC table, that script writing. And next, it will be the automatic execution of the VBAP table. And here we go with the VBAP data extraction. Notice I have the messaging set to write to column P. Don't know if you caught that. So that way uh, this messaging writing doesn't overwrite anything, any of my data here. All right, so there we go. There is my linked data extraction. I've got my sales document numbers writing to column G, and they were filtered off of the column A. And so let's take a look at that 6559 document that I had mentioned earlier. So I'm just going to now uh, remove this data here. And now let's do the filter based on the 6559 as well as that customer number. Just run this one more time here. There we've got the first data extraction. Now 
Now the second data extraction from the VBAP table. And there we go. So there's an example of how to build a table join as well as how to filter based on one or more values. And so if you want to take this a step further and make it so that your end user can actually run this right from Excel and not even have to utilize Process Runner, I'm going to actually close out of Process Runner right now and show you what we can do to embed these process files into Excel. So if you do have Process Runner Excel add-in, right from the tab here, you just select this Add button and then go to your uh, folder. I've got mine set to the default, so the Inawera in my documents. Then I go to Process Files. Select the VBAC, the parent folder. And by selecting the parent folder, it's going to automatically embed the second process file as well. And you can link as many process files as you want together, so you don't just have to do one. You could link you know, three or four, and you can also link the different technologies. You can link as many process files as you want and across as many of the technologies as you want as well. So now if I go to the process files drop down here, this shows that VBAC and that VBAP. Both of these data extractions are here. If I just want to change the display name of it bit, I can switch this back to the just the standard VBAC. And I'll click close here and let's run this one more time, this time right from Excel. So I'm going to delete these values here. Just keep the filter the same. I'll push the run button here. Log into SAP again. And now I've got both scripts linked together, done a successful table join, able to run that right from Excel. Very easy for my end user. Don't even have to have Process Runner installed on their desktop if they have the Process Runner Excel add-in license. And there you go. Thank you for watching this video. And if you'd like more information on Process Runner or Process Runner Excel add-in, you can contact us through inaware.com.